This is my ridiculously overkill avionics package for my RANS S21 home build push plane. I'm gonna talk about each of these components and make sure to stick around to the end to see how I'm gonna take advantage of a cool little trick that these two G3X touches have up their sleeves. Hey, it's Steve, welcome back to Clear Direct. Before we get going, I wanna talk a little bit about what I'm doing with these VR goggles. What? I am designing That's my crazy. aircraft livery, the paint scheme with Whoa. this Italian you know, Bugatti and Ferrari oh paint God. designer. It's gonna be super exciting. We're gonna do it from afar and I'm gonna record everything. So look for that episode coming very wow. soon. I am not sponsored by Garmin or really anybody, but I do wanna specifically thank Jessica Veruda. She works for New View Technologies up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and I actually flew out to pick up all these things and she has been just advising me on what I need and kind of giving me the tips on how to wire the thing. So I'm a first time home builder and to think that I'm gonna take on the challenge of designing and building the wiring harness for this thing is kind of crazy. So make sure you subscribe to see how I kind of muddle my way yes. through that. Clearly I love technology and it's one of the reasons why I'm building a home built in the first place. All of these avionics, if I were to put them in a certified aircraft would cost probably three times, four times as much as they're costing me to put in my bush plane. That's kind of why I went a little bit overkill because I, I went through an avionics upgrade with a Bonanza and I just, I couldn't do all this because I couldn't afford it. So it's a little bit more affordable. It's still very expensive, don't get me wrong. I was gonna go with just one G3X Touch. I decided to go with two because it does a cool trick that again, we're gonna get to at the end. So let's get going. This is a carbon fiber panel, clearly, from Aerosport Products. They make a lot of products for RVs and they're getting into the Rans S21 outbound. Got a couple other products from them. Okay, it adds stiffness, uh, reduces a little bit of weight and just kind of looks cool. So let's get that uh, aside and start working our way from left to right. I guess I should talk about my mission. My mission is going to be going into Idaho and the back country, but I do want light IFR. I don't have de-icing capabilities clearly in a bush plane. First off, let's start with the PO tube. This is the GAP26, GAP26. It's heated, it's unregulated, uh, and it's really beefy. It's pretty nice. Okay, and I've got a switch for that. We're going to talk about all the switches here in a second. USB power ports. I will install one on the panel and then one in the remote location so that I can power my cameras via USB cable out to each wing. This guy is the uh, GAD29 and it's the air ink converter. It kind of uh, makes sure that you can talk from GPS WAS to, um, to the G3X Touch. This is the GEA24, it's the engine monitor. So it has a lot of sensors going into the um, forward of the firewall. And then it uh, converts everything, uh, both over the CAN bus as well as the serial port for backup into the G3X Touch. So you can monitor your uh, all sorts of things, your uh, fuel pressure, uh, your cylinder head temperatures, your exhaust gas, gas temperatures, etc. Okay, this is the, the GSU25C. So this gets the static line, the pitot tube line, and then an AOA line that the pitot tube provides. So that's a cool capability of this setup is I do get AOA with that. That's gonna mount to the back of the G3X Touch. Okay, moving on. I've got a couple of remote LRUs because I wanted to keep the panel fairly clean. Okay, so this right here is my audio panel. Fun fact, you don't actually need an audio panel if you only have one radio. But if you have two radios, you need an audio panel. So this is the GMA245R. R stands for remote. And it's essentially the same form factor as the one that you put in a panel, just with a blank panel. But you still do get USB power out of there. I'm going to use that to power my GoPro cameras on my wings. I've got uh, USB-C cables that go out to the wings. That's USB-A. Okay, the other remote... LRU I have is the GTR20R, so it's a, a remote mounted VHF radio. Okay, into the good stuff. The G3X Touch, otherwise known as the GDU460 10 inch screen. So, not much to describe here. It's just a big touch screen. It's great, pretty thin, and it's got, a, it's got its own fan on the back of it. And then, one cool trick that it can do is it has uh, a video in. So, I'm going to mount a, like a, just a car backup camera inside my cowling and uh, so that uh, as a tail dragger you can see out the nose in case uh, just for safety while you're taxiing around okay the center stack at the top this is the gmc 507 this is the mode controller for your autopilot it's the same uh, mode controller as the gfc 500 in certified aircraft but this is the experimental version and just this unit's the gmc 
507. You don't even need this. You could actually control all functions with your autopilot on your G3X Touch, but just flying 737s, I like a mode controller and I like tactile. I don't have to go digging through screens to you know, turn my heading or do something with the autopilot. So that's why I opted to have uh, a mode controller on the actual panel. All right, here's my number one radio. So this is the GTR 200B. It's got Bluetooth capabilities here. And again, you can control your radios through the G G3X Touch, but I like the idea of just reaching up and uh, being able to control my radio there. Beneath that is the GNX 375. So that's kind of the meat and potatoes of the IFR package. It's a WAS enabled GPS as well as it has a transponder, both ADS-B in and out. So that's fantastic. Uh, and it's also touch screen. In my Bonanza, I have a GTN 650, which looks pretty similar, but the big difference is that this doesn't have uh, COM or NAV radios in it. And as well, of course, it has the, the transponder integrated into it. So that's the differences there. All right, I've got the G5. Uh, I won't go into details, just essentially a, a, a backup PFD and uh, HSI if you need it to be. So great backup, and you can actually just run your autopilot off of that, but uh, I don't plan to. Okay, further on to the right here is my second G3X Touch. We talked about that. The way I'm gonna have this configured is this gonna be uh, the PFD, the primary flight display, and then of course this is the MFD, the multifunction display. Map and engine functions over here, and then primary flight display, you know, your, your, your artificial horizon right there, and um, some other indicators on that side is how I'm gonna run that. Okay, further on over here, here are the servos for the autopilot system. We talked a little bit about the autopilot here. So this integrates via just CAN bus, um, the GSA 28s. There's two of these here. I'm gonna remove one of these control arms and put on a cap stand. So one of these will be f uh, for push rod for my pitch, but then roll, I have an aileron cable. So I'll, I'll replace this arm with that and that'll integrate well with the cable. And what I really like about these is that there's essentially no friction added because there's a little solenoid that, that, uh, that disengages when it's not active. And then of course, when it's active and it can take over, if you're having a spatial disorientation uh, thing going on, it'll actually take control of the aircraft and uh, set you right. So that's kind of cool. Okay, um, getting away from the Garmin for a little bit, this is the vertical power system. This is the PPS, so the primary power system. This replaces contactors. It has an input for alternator, and then out to the battery. And then of course it talks to the, the VPX and the VPX integrates very well with the G3X touch. So you can monitor everything that's going through here. So what is this? This is the, the power distribution system. It's an electronic circuit breaker system. It gets rid of all the, the manual circuit breakers and solid states, highly reliable. And you can still have the function of like pulling a circuit breaker uh, as long as your, your screens are working redundancy there if one screen uh, goes out your other screen will take over and you can navigate to any screen from either so uh, that's the vertical power system moving over here since i mentioned light ifr i want to have battery backup so i've got a six amp hour battery it's 12 volt the whole system is 12 volts and this will always be running it'll always be charging certain of these units have two power sources which is great but some only have one in which case i'll just run the power through this and it has through power that goes out to the LRU. Okay, getting into the lights, these are the Aero LED landing lights. They'll be able to wig-wag uh, based upon speed, and I can set that up uh, via an Ethernet cable with, with a PC. You can set the speed uh, through the VPX. I've got the Avio Power Burst NG 3-in-1 wingtip lights. 3-in-1, okay, so it has position lights, so red and green. You can't really tell which one's red, which one's green right now. Uh, but then it also has the is effectively the tail light, so uh, white lights in the back, and it also has strobe feature. I've got switches for each of those. Here's my ELT. This is Artex ELT 345. It has a remote cable to uh, to the panel. Control stick grips. This is made by Ray Allen. I've got five buttons on here. Push to talk. I've got trim up, trim down. I have autopilot disconnect, and then over here I haven't decided yet. Either it's going to be ident or toga i'm not sure i think it'll probably be ident i don't anticipate using toga very often you can still get to ident or toga through the screens if you need to something else i've got hiding back here is the gmu 11 box i have the, just the box because it's already installed in my airplane antennas okay pretty much all the antennas are cobham e-series antennas this one particularly for the transponder but i've got of course two vhf antennas and an elt antenna and then also a gps antenna for the waz let's 
talk about the switches we have over here. First off, I'm gonna have these mounted left to right, the backup battery. It, it, it's gonna be the first thing you, you turn on when you get to your aircraft, because that's always gonna be on, unless there's a malfunction or whatnot. And then of course, then you turn on the battery master, and then you're probably gonna skip over the alternator. I mean, some people turn that on first, but then you're gonna hit the boost pump and start up the aircraft once everything's running, and ensure the alternator's on. Then you turn on your avionics master and then accessories. Um, accessories will include the USB power. Um, I'm gonna have a, a fan behind the panel and potentially some camera power. Okay, then we have nav lights. So those will power the red, green, and white lights. Then of course the strobe lights on the wingtip, the landing lights on and off. That won't control wigwag, it's just on and off. The speed will control the wigwag. And then we have pitot heat. And then we'll get to this here in a second. That's the cool trick that the G3X touches do. And then cockpit, that'll be a dome light. Okay, so the map switch, the trick up its sleeve. When you have two G3X touches, they don't have to be both 10 inch screens. They could be the smaller versions as well. So I mentioned this is gonna be my PFD and this is gonna be the MFD. Well, that is a manual reversion switch. So that if you hit that switch, now you can have both be PFD. You can kind of trick it into thinking that, hey, this, this one's dead and now this needs to pick up the PFD. The reason why I think that's neat is if I do some training with my son or daughter or whoever wants to, to fly right seat, we can have them fly PFD over here. So that's the cool trick up its sleeve that it can do. Okay, before I sign off, I wanna talk two more things. First off, why I went all Garmin. Um, I have experience with Garmin. I like their products. They interact well with each other from the tail of the airplane with the GMU 11 to the front of the airplane with the GEA 24 to the autopilot in the middle. Just seamless integration, um, high quality. I've had experience with their customer service su support. I really like the G3X installation manual. It's really well done. I didn't look too much into other avionics. So to be fair, I know there's awesome other options out, out there that are probably less expensive. Finally, IFR. Have you noticed something that's missing here? VOR, ILS, don't need them. WAS, GPS, you don't need them. I'm not gonna get into the details of, of how or why, there's a great video that I'll link below um, that explains how you can get by with that. But I have everything I need for the type of flying that I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna leave this episode here, Avionics Part 1. Part 2, of course, we'll get into actually building the wiring harness. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, you're cleared to wreck. <laughs>